Salam, everybody. Um, today, I'm giving my speech on God's mercy. And I looked up the definition of mercy. And I found it was compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to read a verse. 6.12, say, to whom belongs everything in the heavens and the earth? Say to God, he has decreed that mercy is his attribute. He will surely summon you all on the day of resurrection, which is inevitable. The ones who lose their souls are those who disbelieve. <sighs> yep. So, basically, mercy is an attribute of God, and mercy means that if you do something wrong or you deserve to be punished, but then a higher power that has the ability to do that doesn't punish you, that's mercy. So I'm going to start by talking about the heavenly feud. Um, Satan thought he could be a god and run dominion without problems. The majority sided with God and said Satan can't do it, but a min minority said he could. Those were the jinns. And then, uh, oh yeah, even the jinns aren't even guaranteed hell because everyone gets a chance, no matter if they go fully against God or not. They actually get a longer period of time than us. They have a couple hundred years to get back to God. They have powers, and they can roam at like the speed of light, go through the galaxies and cosmos and stuff. Then there was us. We thought there was a chance that Satan could be a god, or we didn't know. And the angels thought we should be kicked out right away. They had no tolerance for our blasphemy, even though it wasn't against them. But God, and it was against him, thought we should be given a chance. So he said we could repent. We didn't. But uh, the animals, the stars, the planets, they all repented, and they're serving a submissive role down here. Oh, yeah, and now we get another chance down on uh, this planet to get back to God. And so we have a freedom of choice to see if Satan can run his dominion or not. And it was a free choice. God didn't tell us he was going to help us in any way, but being the most merciful, he did. 7.172. We are born with instinctive knowledge about God. Uh, recall that your Lord summoned all the descendants of Adam and had them bear witness for themselves. Am I not your Lord? They all said, yes, we bear witness. Thus, you cannot say in the day of resurrection we were not aware of this. And the footnote, thus, every human being is born with an instinctive knowledge about God. Uh, 2, 272, God is the only one who guides. You are not responsible for guiding anyone. God is the one who guides whoever he chooses. Whoever chooses to be guided. Any charity you give is for your own good. Any charity you give shall be for the sake of God. Any charity you give will be repaid to you without the least injustice. So God sent messengers also uh, to help us get back to him. And um, they brought miracles with them, like the parting of the sea, the turning the sea into blood, Jesus healing the leprosy, or if that's what it's called. And um, yeah, so he sent messengers, gave us miracles, gave us the instinctive knowledge of him. And when I read 272, he also, if we want to get back to him, he will help us get back to him because he will guide us in that path and make sure maybe we'll see signs, be pushed in that direction. Um, we were also given the scriptures. We were given the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Final Testament, the Quran. And they all have examples of the past that make mistakes, of people that made mistakes and were punished. And we were able to learn from these mistakes so we don't make the same mistakes. And uh, the Quran tells us what we need to do to get back to God. Um, also, you look at all the books in the world about religion, and you might wonder, how do we know which is the right book? Which do we follow? Well, God gave us a mathematical miracle in the Quran 
so we know that this is from God. It's literally mathematically proven like impossible to be human made. And that's how we know we're following the right book. Yeah. Also, um, it's a mercy to know the Quran is the truth and not distorted because the other Muslims, traditionalists, have some pretty crazy laws that they don't know if they're right or not because they were grown up with that. 538? Um, is that yeah. Mathematical proof supports Quranic justice. The thief, male or female, you shall mark their hands as a punishment for their crime and to serve as an example from God. God is almighty and most wise. Footnote. The practice of cutting off the thief's hand as agreed by the false Muslims is a satanic practice without a Quranic basis. Due to the special importance of this example, God has provided mathematical proof in support of marking the hand of the thief rather than severing it. Verse 1231 refers to the women who so admired Joseph that they cut their hands. Obviously, they did not cut off their hands. Nobody can. The sum of Zora and verse numbers are the same for 538 and 1231, i.e. 43. It is also the will and mercy of God that this mathematical relationship conforms with the Quran's 19 base code. 19 verses after 1231, we see the same word, 1250. Okay, age of 40, another mercy of God. Age of 40, uh, the age of decision, 4615. 40, the age of decision. We enjoyed the human being to honor his parents. His mother bore him artistly, gave birth to him artistly, and took intimate care of him for 30 months. When he reaches maturity and reaches the age of 40, he should say, My Lord, direct me to appreciate the blessings you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents, and to do the righteous works that please you. Let my children be righteous as well. I have repented to you. I am a submitter. The footnote, God knows full well who deserves to go to heaven and who deserves to go to hell. It is his law that whomever he puts to death before the age of 40 shall go to heaven. God's immense mercy is reflected in the fact that most people have dif difficulty accepting this divine mercy. They argue, put them in hell. See Appendix 32. On top of everything God has given us, God said for the first 40 years of our lives, we won't be responsible. This means we go to heaven if we die before 40. There's terrorist attacks and wars that have happened around the world where women and children die. People go crazy and say these innocent people are dying, but they don't know that all these kids are saved. There's no good around these kids, and when they die, it seems bad, but it's actually beneficial for them because the life that they're living in is far worse. Um, they didn't have t time to look around and see for themselves who God is. Bombs and terrorism is what they're used to. So having God in your life in a time like that is unlikely. Therefore, they are redeemed by God. Zura 440, divine justice. God does not inflict an atom's weight of injustice. On the contrary, he multiplies the reward manifold for the righteous work and grants from him a great recompense. God gives people what they deserved and a fair chance in this life. If they don't get their fair chance, which is 40 years, God brings them into heaven, which is a great reward. So Ted Bundy, famous guy. Um, I don't have time to read the whole appendix I pasted, but I'm pretty sure he killed like 19 women or something. And uh, basically, he was supposed to die before 40, but some stuff happened, and he didn't die before 40. He died after, sending him to hell. People wanted him to die maybe right away because they thought he deserved it, but I'm going to get back to that. He died after 40, remember that. Um, another guy, Jeffrey Dahmer, he ate people. He raped people and murdered people. You might know him for that. Killed 17 people between the years 1978 and 1991. He died at 34 years old in 1994. So this just shows us that 
even though two people might seem like they're the exact same, they both killed a lot of people, did a lot of bad things, God knows what's inside their hearts, and he knows who deserves to go to heaven and not. So when Ted Bundy didn't die when he was supposed to, that was because it was God's plan, because he didn't deserve heaven. And then I'm going to end on this verse, 23109. They ridicule the believers. A group of my servants used to say, Our Lord, we have believed, so forgive us and shower us with mercy. Of all the merciful ones, you are the most merciful. How did you know that Ted Bundy, is that his name? Was, okay, that yeah. guy didn't go to heaven. He could, he could still go to heaven if he's over 40. That's what I said, I think. But looking at what his actions were in his life, didn't look like he deserved it. And the fact that he could have died before 40, but he didn't, shows it was God's plan. Yeah. But God is the only judge. Yep. Done. Done. Cool. Okay. Nice. The mom, really? Mom wants to... Don't. Okay, you raise your hand. Raise hand. Okay. Um, Ted Bundy went to hell, by the way. Okay, but anyway, uh, so I just wanted to actually ask you something. You said something very important in your speech, so I'm going to go somewhere deep, okay? So you mentioned that traditional Muslims and stuff like that follow, like, their traditions and some things that don't make sense. So you're, like, mashallah, like, you know, a growing up submitter. What do you think are ways, like, for you, and you would suggest, like, other people your age to be able to ask questions to make sure those kind of innovations don't happen? Or, like, you know, you're doing things because you believe it to be the truth and not just because, like, someone tells you or your parents tell you or something? Uh, well, first off, you could ask in Quran study. And when you're looking for answers, make sure they include Quranic evidence so you can verify that God says so and it's not just made up. Awesome. Yeah. Praise God.